What's going on, everyone? It's Legend of Two Games. Friday, April 3rd, day 23 without sports. We've reached the Jordan number, but the marathon continues. The quarantine tour continues, man. Stay hydrated, stay safe, stay indoors. With that being said, I got to get into this topic that was presented by my man Jamal. Um, and I'm going to rephrase the question a little bit, uh, but hopefully you guys like it. Before I get into it, though, if you have any sports debates, comments, topics, um, old games you want me to get into, send it over, man. I'd be happy to address it in a video blog or a written blog. Um, we're looking for content, man, and we need your guys' help on that as well. Uh, but with that being said, here's the question. Um, who is the best team to never make an NBA Finals appearance over the last 20 years? And I revised it a little bit. Uh, one, we want to focus on the last 20 years, of course, just to kind of simplify it a little bit. But also, uh, I didn't want to say best team to never win a championship because there were a couple teams that actually made the Finals. But whether it was due to injury or suspension, maybe they didn't get a chance to win those NBA Finals. Um, so I don't want to eliminate, I, I didn't want to group them in because they got to the finals. I want to use teams that were very good, um, had the talent to win an NBA championship, but just didn't make the NBA finals. And there are several teams in this discussion. Uh, you got the O2 Sacramento Kings who are very loaded with Chris Webber, uh, Mike Bibby, Vladi Divox, Peja Stojakovic, a lot of shooters on that team, a lot of good ball players on that team. You also had the 2004 Indiana Pacers who had Jermaine O'Neal at his prime at the time, Steven Jackson, Ron Artest, Reggie Miller. That team was very good as well, but ultimately became undone by the Malice in the Palace. Uh, the Sacramento team that I previously referenced, they went to a Western Conference Finals and lost to the Lakers. They also lost in the second round to the Lakers one year. They were very good. They just can't get over that hump. There was a little referee controversy. Look up Tim Donahue if you don't know what I'm talking about. That was included in that one as well. Uh, you got the 2005 and 2006 Phoenix Suns, led by Steve Nash, Amari Stoudemire, Sean Marion. Uh, Joe Johnson was on that team one time. Quentin Richardson, a lot of good ball players on that team as well. They couldn't get over the hump of the Spurs. Uh, they had one year where suspensions kind of hurt them. They had another year where injuries hurt them, where they... Pretty much were the best offense in all of basketball with their seven seconds or less mentality. Um, and then into this to the second part of the decade, we didn't get to see those same type of teams because the super team started taking over. Uh, LeBron, D Wade, and Bosch with the Heat. Obviously, then uh, Durant and Golden State and Steph Curry they dominated the last ten years. Um, so over the course of twenty years, like I said, I've named a few teams that I think were very, very good and had the potential to win an NBA championship or at least get to an NBA championship, I should say. Uh, but the one team that sticks out the most to me, the team that had the deepest pool of roster, uh, deepest roster talent, I should say, and probably had the best overall team for about two or three years and just couldn't get over the hump, were the 2000 Portland Trailblazers. This team was absolutely loaded, man. Uh, Rasheed Wallace, Scottie Pippen, Damon Stoudemire, Steve Smith, um, Bonzi Wells. This team was so good, Jermaine O'Neal couldn't even play on him. He couldn't get no playing time because they had Sabonis at center on that team. So we're talking multiple Hall of Famers. Uh, Mike Dunleavy was their coach. Who Mike Dunleavy, for those of you that don't know, he had led an older Portland team in the early 90s to the finals. He was trying to lead this team, a very young version of those uh, previous Portland teams, to the finals. And they couldn't get over the hump. Um, the, the biggest letdown, obviously, was being up double digits against the Lakers in Game 7 of the 2000 Western Conference Finals before losing to Shaq and Kobe. Um, it's great history to talk about. And it's an important time in NBA history because if the Portland Trailblazers beat the Lakers that year. That was Phil Jackson's first year as head coach there. Shaq and Kobe had come up short a couple times in the playoffs. If Portland had beat the Lakers that year, there's no telling how long Kobe and Shaq would have been together. They obviously never three-peat. And it also changes the legacy of Scottie Pippen. Scottie Pippen, with his six rings, had never been to a finals without Michael Jordan. This was the second time he had been on a team that had gone to Game 7 of a conference championship game and had an opportunity to win. Uh, and obviously they didn't get the job done. That changes his legacy. It also adjusts Rasheed Wallace's legacy. We know about him going to two finals with Detroit, but had he been able to do it with Portland, we probably view him on a different level uh, and, a, and a, put him in a different tier of superstar within the NBA. We all know he was a great player, uh, but if he could have got it done in Portland, that definitely changed the dynamics of his career, man. But let me know what you guys think. For me, the best team over the last 20 years that did not make an NBA Finals is the 2000 Portland Trailblazers. Drop a comment, drop a like. Let me know what you guys think, and let me know if there's another team or another subject you want to debate, man. Legend of Two Games, Real Fans, Real Talk. We'll be back very soon. But in the meantime, the quarantine tour continues, and stay indoors.
What's up, guys? I'm Emerald Marie, and be sure to check us out on the web at realfansrealtalk.com. This is your African King of Comedy, Michael Blackson. You're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Get real with it, my son. Real 